30 worst blunders of my blunders that I've been keeping, um, which has been a few months. And like, I got to see, I'm going to go through this myself. So I thought I'd record it. It's going to make me look really stupid, but I need to do this. So here I go. Um, this first one, 409 blunder. For some reason, I thought to hit on the seven instead of making the four. So like I look at this right now and I would make the four right away and probably go 10 to eight. It seems obvious now. Um, so I hope most of these things do feel obvious. But yeah, this one, like if I go 13 to seven, that's a lot of easy blots and I'm outboarded. Okay, this one, I will never make this mistake again. Can I move to the next thing? Okay, here we go. Double fives. Okay, so here we go. These are all matches to five also. Here I brought down three and, and split there instead of just splitting. I mean, um, doing the point swap, hitting on the one, right? So I think if I think about this two scenarios. I've been trying to um, do the Ziska method because um, I just read that book. So one scenario, if I hit him, like what does it look like if I hit on the one there? It's a five point board with him with a blot on the roof, which is like, that's low odds to come in. So I will be, I do have daylight here. So that's a huge, like, I'm going to win, like, 80, 90% of those games after I do this. So I think that's why this is such a bad blunder, because I'm giving him a free roll to escape with a six, and then if I don't hit him then, like, no, free roll, forget about escaping. He's going to point on me if I don't hit him. If I don't hit him, if I give him a free roll here, he hits me with so many numbers, a point or he makes the 20. Make, he's going to hit me or make the 20. And then I'm just going to be sitting here hopefully hitting him. Okay. That was a bad one. 4-3. Okay. This one, I hit on the 18 because I like to hit on their side of the board and then I come down 13 to 9. But that leaves like five blots and he has more points than me. And I don't have any, I got one point. So I'm risking it all with five blots for really nothing. Just make the five point is pretty much always the move. I just got, conf I don't know, I saw that blot in the 18, I guess I, I don't know. Can't defend that, next one. Okay, this is a bigger size of a picture. Okay, so this one is a drop, and I took it. I've got three, two blots, one on the roof. This is a four cube. Okay, so this is like I was on tilt. I had doubled before, probably too early, and then this gets returned to me. I'm on the roof. I see he's got two blots. But, like, look, he's hitting me with sixes and threes and a bunch of other things. Uh, no, pretty much just sixes and threes. A 4-2, a 5-1. Yeah, I'm getting hit next turn. So I'm going to have two on the roof. So I can't hold a cue with two on the roof, and he's got four points on his home board. I just can't. Even if he's got blots, I've got two on the roof. And then it's going to be three on the roof. So the gammons are 56%. Okay, of course. So this just this was a 0.85. It's pretty dumb. I have to go through this. I have to talk it out, though. It's a draw. It's the 77% to win, 10% gammons. Because I see I've got that thing. I've got the 24 point. So I got two back, and I know that is never good in terms of like my winning percentage can't be high with that. I guess he's got good distribution on the 17, 19, 20, and I see that blot, but it's it's he's clearing that next next roll. So next roll he's definitely gonna either make a point 
or clear the 10. Or he can make the, yeah, he can make the 18. That would be terrible. Then I'm probably getting gammoned. Very, very low winning chances. Should have dropped it because of that. Let's look at this one. <clears throat> this one is pretty much an even race. Almost symmetrical um, check distribution, but I double because I'm on roll. But that's too soon. Look how close it is. 57% only for wins. Um, this is just too long of a race to do that. I should wait until I have 10% of a pip lead. Okay. Yeah. That's just way too, way too long of a race for that. Okay. This one, I get doubled and I take it but it's a drop. I've only got 21%. Okay. Again, so the 20 is not going to be that helpful in terms of contact because neither of these things are direct shots. He's going to safety one of them. Um, he's going to safety one of them or make a point with them or hit me. So that's a lot of good stuff. And I know I'm like, I like my, my front position is perfect. So that's why I kept it, but no, just not likely. The likelihood of hitting a shot or getting a shot is low, and then you have to hit it. So it's like 30% of a low number. Okay, here I doubled, but I know this has been my problem. I got three back here. So if you got three back, that's work to do, right? So here he's got, this is a 50-50 ball game. This was a stupid move. Yep. This is this is tough, kind of tough to watch, but um, yeah, I made this play. I doubled here. I really don't have a lot of good numbers. Not a good immediate future. Like, what am I hoping for? Double twos, double threes. Um, I'm still going to leave a shot on the one, and then I've got the chicken on twenty three is going to be really hard to get rid of. So, not a, a lot of reasons I should have seen this coming. Uh, okay, this one I didn't double, but I should have. This is a very volatile position. Okay, I've got the cube, he's at two, um, and I'm at zero. So here I hit with all sixes, and then like four fives is gonna have the one or the two there. So that's more, and then the threes, direct, you know, there's a lot of numbers. So I'm gonna hit often um and maybe i can cover hit you know it's not certain but look at his number look at where his checkers are you know he's he's already crunched so he's not gonna win a long game if i hit him here even if he hits me back i'm still gonna win the game so that's why even though i'm at 106 my contact value is just huge um it's tough to call your shot like this you know when you're 50 pips behind and don't have great containment. Um, you gotta be, I, you know, this is a tough, I'm not surprised I made this error. Okay, keep it going. Here's another one. Okay, this one I took with three checkers on the 24. Who, who takes a cube with three checkers on the 24? without with you know with their sixes blocked and I'm gonna have a fourth one or fifth checker behind the their prime I've made my one point which is a terrible combination with the 24 point um, so I have 30 percent winning chances here which I guess you know that's not nothing but it's the gamins. Look, they're twenty-five percent gonna gammy, and he's at you know seventy percent and twenty-five percent gamins. Um, when I'm at three to one, okay, so I'm up three to one. So if I lose a gammon, I lose the game, the match. So, but if I just drop it here, it's it's uh, I'm still winning. So. Yeah, much better to drop that.
Okay, here I'm on the bar, and I get doubled, and it's a four-point bar. Okay, it's a four-point bar. I've got a good prime there, but it's only a four prime. He's going to close me out is what's going to happen. There's a good close me out uh, odds here. And look, he's got 43%. So I think if he closes me out, it's like going to be a gamut. So he closes me out 43% of the time. The other time I can maybe make an anchor and, you know, he's only got one back. I can't get two guys off of him. But, you know, it's he's in just a superior position. So I think, again, I got excited because I see his plot and I do see some past to victory here, but it's only 30%. And I'm definitely going to get gamut. Well, not definitely. 43 is huge. I got to sense those 43% gamut rate gains. Okay, what else we got? This one, I dropped the cube and I have 45% to win. Okay, here it's a four-point board, but this time he's got no ammunition to cover me after that. So he's not closing me out. He's got four back. I don't have a great prime at all, but he's got four back. So he's not ending the game anytime soon. So, you know, three back, four back, it's going to be a 70-30 at most. Um, so I should take this, right? And, and I have 10% gammon chances. I'm winning this 45% of the time. He's got a lot of work to do to get those checkers home. A lot of work to do. And I'm not in imminent danger of getting closed out. Okay. Here we go. What's this one about? Um, okay. You can't see that because it's cut off. Oh, that's better. 47%. 52% for me. Okay, so 52% and I don't double here. No, I do double. I double when I've got four back, right? So if I've got four back, I just said, it's like, how can I have more than 60% chances to win if I've got four back? Um, so I've got, this is a 52-47 game. So even if I hit him, he, I, I don't have containment here. I don't have a five. He, you know, not having the five is makes it really easy to get out. So I don't have enough to double. Okay, and this one I dropped a cube. He's got three back, which is work to do. He's got work to do. Three back. Got a little bit of coverage here. This is a little bit of contact. I got the thirteen still, so. I've got 35% to win. Even though I'm on the one, he hasn't made all this stuff yet. Like he might immediately, he could make one of those, but not both. So, yeah, it's a, it's a big take. Okay, and now this one, is a big drop at 68% 68% to win for them okay um, yeah I got three blots 68% is not bad but the three blots make it uh, well like two blots and one on the roof that's 30% gammons so even when it was 25% gammons that was like off on a drop. So here I'm at two again. So I want to really stay away from those gamini cubes. Um, you know, 30% is good enough to take sometimes, but with this gamins, and I really don't have anything going. I've got one one checker down. Two one opening. It's terrible. Or what was it? Okay, let's keep going. 855. Oh my god. I doubled here. I'm winning 68, but this is... I'm up 3-1, right? So if I double, he's of course going to take and redouble. Um, so I'm playing for the game here. So I'm taking 
and I'm playing for the game instead of just letting it ride because I'm not going to get Gammon. So then if I lose that game, then it would be, you know, three to two instead of losing the match. So this is a risk reward problem. You know, like I can see why you would double this and if, if, if the score was reversed, this is totally because of the score. Right? Because I've got chances to win, I got chances for gammon, but the gam if I double it, then the gammons don't mean anything. Cool. Okay, so th this one huge drop and I took it. I really have nothing going on. I got six on the five. He's got three and a half points. He's gonna hit me with sixes, threes, and ones. Four and and then so look it's 42% gamuts. I gotta sniff that out. 42% gamuts. He's got one escaped already. I gotta drop that. Even though I'm behind, he's just gonna win the game with a gamut. Like almost half the time. Okay, here I double. He's got two on the roof and I got four points. Okay, so yeah, of course he's going to drop that. People two on the roof are going to drop it a lot. So when it's so easy for them to drop, take a roll. There's no, like, unless he rolls double fives or double fours, it's like I need to continue and play on because it's an obvious drop. Right. I saw the four five, yeah. Yeah, he's not going to answer with both of those very often. And then I'll be able to hit one, bring a couple guys down. Yeah, too good. Especially 3-3. Three, three. Gammon wins the game. I'm already at 63% Gammon. It's just don't double, and you're going to win the match 63% of the time. <sighs> okay, it's terrible. This is another one. I took this. I've got six back. Six back is a lot of work. Like, I'm saying three back is a lot of work. Six back, they're not, you're just not getting them. They're just never going to be done work. Their work is ongoing. Okay. Yep, that's a lot of gamuts. Cool. And this one I took, but I'm on the roof here. Four point bar. He can make another one. He can escape. Not a lot of some contact for me, but not a lot of problems for this person to get around and finish the game. This is another one I should have taken because they've got four back pretty much, right? So that's work to do. I'm not going to get closed out immediately. You know, he's got to bring people around and then, you know, he gets stuck. You roll some double fours. I mean, some double other things. Okay, and then this one dropped it. 22. I took this. I have 22% wins. He's got 30. I got four blots, five blots. Hits me with everything. Points on me with pretty much every number. Or hits me in the outfield. Yeah, this is going to go bad so many different ways. And I got my one point made. So even if I hit, it's such weak con, you know, I can't contain it. And I'm already behind in the race. This one, just checkers. Okay. <laughs> 458 on a checker move. I ran, giving them six and ones to hit me. Instead of just keeping back. I saw the two blots. I'm like, oh yeah, you're supposed to go when there's two blots, but can't give him so you have to like it's also just not needed the six and you can't give up a double shot and have that be the expectation you're not going to get away with that here okay could have made the four hit loose and he's got a million a million uh, hit backs counter shots and I don't have any points so why am I hitting so it's all risk no return 4-1 okay this one I needed to, to double tiger I need to hit in the 7 and continue with the 4 
hitting once isn't really going to do anything, right? With that, no, hitting once is not going to do much. Got to go for it. It's the only chance I have to get out of this. I can't give him any type of roll. And if, it, if I need to make that 24 or escape, so making the 24 is fine. Okay, here I hit, which is only a 4.4. So if I, this is where I should do that. Look at the scenarios, right? So if I escape with two, then he only hits me directly with a 5.6, so I can hit him. Um, but if I hit him and I get hit back, then I pretty much lose that game 100% of the time. Maybe not 100, but like a lot of that. Um, and if I hit and cover him, then I'm going to win that game 100% of the time. But it's just 30% of the time he's going to hit me on with a 2. That's so much to give away. It's so much safer just to jump out. All I'm dodging is a 6-5. And then for sure I'm going to either hit, you know, make another point, make the seven, my situation is going to get better. Yeah, I just needed to look at the likelihood of that. Jesus, keep coming. Okay, 847, because I'm dropping a cube where I have 43% to win. Look, our situations are pretty much the same here. Oh, he's going to make the 18, but like he's... He doesn't have, you know, we we basically have the same amount of, you know, similar structures. So yeah, nothing to be afraid of to drop this. Okay, and this one, I drop it, and he's got two guys back, which is work to do. Okay, here I'm pretty much behind a prime, so I drop it. But he's got three guys back. Okay, so I only he only has twelve percent gamins here. I'm at thirty six percent to win, and I have ten percent gamins. So he's probably gonna have to break that prime, or just give up some shots. Um, yeah, I gotta take it. Two one. Two one and I hit when I have no board. It's a two one. Should have said put them all here, try to get out. Even though I'm behind, if I don't get that, I'm gonna get gamut. So this is my move. Oh yeah, so for my move, I give up 35% gamut. Okay, so I bet that one, 24, 22 is like under 10. So when you're already losing the game by a lot, I should really think about gammons, because I've been playing so many one-point matches where that doesn't matter. But, yeah. Okay, this is the end. Okay. Um, I feel like I can remember those things and not make those chances again. Some of them, I bet I'll make again. It's because I'm being too honest, but... Oh. If I can reduce those, I'll be on a much better track, um, keeping that PR low. Okay, thanks for watching.